and we are going to ask you to write your first initial. So like mine is L. First initial, nice and bold on your piece of paper. Just nice and bold. Here's mine. Nice and bold. I'm an L. And then we're going to take one quick minute and we're going to ask you to turn those lines into a picture. Whatever you want. Just turn it into a drawing, a picture. Ready? You have about 60 seconds. Go. Maybe another 30 seconds or so. Maybe a long 20 seconds. All right, finish up your, wherever you're at. Pencils, pens, crayons down. And we're going to ask you, because we want to commer commemorate this exhibit of loveliness, we're going to ask you to put up your drawing to your camera in a moment and hold it close so everyone can see we're going to try and take a screenshot or two and don't move it for like a good 10 or 20 seconds. All right, let's see. I've got one. And, and then how many, faces, oh my gosh, there's a second page of people. Faces. Just let's throw that face in there. We are going to be using these photos or these drawings quite soon, so. All right, did we get them all? I, was, I heard pop I think we got them all. I got like 80 photos. Excellent, we'll compare notes later. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. All right, so just to give you a breakdown of like, okay, what did I get into? Why did I sign up today? What in the world is happening? I don't really understand what's happening. Let me just go over what we're going to do today. So the event's running from 345 to 515. What we're going to be doing is this. We are going to be trying to let go of this idea that results are better than process. Everyone else is... Um, Lauren, can you let Hannah Fitzgibbons in? She's coming yes. from New Zealand. Hello. Um, yeah, so we're going we're gonna to try to challenge that, that notion, right? Um, and then we're going to really try to explore what play actually is and how it can actually make you more productive. Then we're going to examine what play is and how that ties in with flow, because a lot of times we believe play and flow are, like, are synergistic um, in a way. Um, and then we're going to figure out how do you play. And then from there, once we figure out how do you play, then we're gonna take action to find your flow. So a lot of the things that we're trying to explore today is if you're trying to figure something out, like what is the next thing that is gonna happen, the best way in which you can get the most out of this is to let go of that. And, and not think so much like I'm gonna figure out this specific answer and simply more just enjoy this process. Simply more just be fully present and feel free to actually fully play out. And there's two benefits for fully playing out. First, you'll get so much more out of this workshop because it'll be so much more fun. Um, and second, and this is, this is something for the community, by you playing more, you are gonna actually let others, you're going to give them permission to play more so they can go deeper. Because the questions we're going to be asking you is to try to get much deeper into like, what, what is it that drives me? What are like my play values, right? And then for people that have come and participated in this workshop before, because we ran it a couple months ago, we want you to go even deeper than you did last time, because we're really trying to get down to like the nitty gritty of like, what is the play that drives you? Okay, so if everyone is cool with that, then hold on here, then hold on, how do I get out of this? Oh, there we go, sweet. If everyone's cool with that, we are now ready for a breakout. 
So Lauren, can you walk us through what we're gonna look at? Um, yes, I've lost you, here we are. Okay, so what we are going to ask you to do is we, like I kind of, we, Jeff and I realized we had a similar story, right? Um, where thinking about our childhood helped us gain perspective or think about things in a different way. So what we're doing is we're gonna ask you to reflect as well. Um, close your eyes if you'd like to, or just look into the distance if you're not, you're not into the closing eyes. But just, we want you to reflect and think about what type of play you liked as a kid. For me, mine was sardines. It, maybe it's a sport or um, a specific game or a board game. We do want you to try to think of something specific. Um, not just sports, but like, was it basketball or was it tennis? Like, what, what did you like? And then when you think you have it, give us a quick thumbs up just so we can kind of figure out um, what it is. And you can do this exercise again later, but think of one of your favorites for now. Thumbs up and keep it held up there just so we can kind of click through all of your lovely faces. And we're ready. Okay. So now that you have that, think about it, focus. Now that you have your kind of play, we want you to reflect on what is it about that kind of play that you enjoyed? What drew you to that? Um, like for me, I ended up with, when I thought about it, there was the community creativity and problem solving of sardines. For you, is it maybe consider, are there certain rules that you liked? Are there, was it um, team oriented or solo? Was it competitive? Was it an open sandbox, quote unquote, if you will? And we're gonna give you a couple minutes to just really think about what it's like, you know, two, three, four reasons why you think you like that play, really trying to break it down um, into what at the foundations or basis you liked. <laughs> What drew you to those things? What made you come back to that play again and again? Hopefully you've got a couple things written down and figured out for now. Um, momentarily, we're gonna be sending you into a quick breakout room. Um, you'll disappear from here, but we'll bring you back in. Don't worry. Um, but you're gonna get into breakout rooms uh, with four people. And what we're going to have you do is, uh, first thing you're gonna do is choose a facilitator. It's really three or four of you. And the facilitator, who is basically just a person keeping an eye on the time, which we're gonna have a timer in like the top right of your little breakout room for you to pay attention to. Um, you're going, they're gonna be paying attention to the time so that you rotate every like two or three, like two or three minutes, but we're mostly doing an introduction. You're gonna choose your facilitator by whoever has the longest hair, because we've all been stuck in quarantine and no one can go to get their haircut, or you're one of the lucky few who has. So you're gonna choose a facilitator, facilitator by your longest hair. And then what you're going to do, I'm going to copy and paste these into this chat right here. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to share a couple things. If you came in a little bit late, don't worry. You may not have this first thing here. That's okay. Um, but we're going to have you, after you figure out your facilitator, you're going to go around and introduce yourselves. You're gonna share your drawing that we did. Like, my name's Lauren, this is my drawing that I drew with my initial and this is what I drew. And you're gonna share what your play thing was, so mine was sardines, and you're gonna share what your play values were. Like, what was it about that play that you loved? And it's 
not fully a discussion yet. We're going to go round robin so everyone gets through. And then once you're done, if you still have time, try to dig a little bit deeper, maybe help somebody else flush out their foundations of play values. If they don't have a good grasp, you can help them figure it out. Okay. Jeff, are we ready? We'll see you all in about, oh gosh, in about, we're going to do about 15, 12 or 15 minutes. So every like three or four minutes, make sure you're getting through or get through and then come back and chat all together. Hey there. Hello. Hello. How's everyone? Very good. Very good. good. It's all ladies. <laughs> like it. Who has the longest hair? <laughs> I feel like you might, Louise. Yeah. Hair, it's yeah. definitely between Stephanie and Louise. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think That's it's Louise. Happy to facilitate. <laughs> awesome. I'd love to know where everyone's from, too. So, yeah. If you, um, Stephanie, why don't you start maybe with um, your drawing and where you're from? So, I'm in Northern Virginia right now, so just outside of DC. Um, and my drawing is a snake. Oh, nice. Like, it went the easiest with the S, <laughs> first thing that came to mind. <laughs> um, Love it. We're just going to go through all the points, or are we going to do, like, each person does each question? Um, what feels good to you guys? What do you think? Introductions first, or, um, Let's go do to each other. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, who do you pick, Stephanie, to go next? Uh, let's go with Shari. Uh, so hi, I'm Sherry, and uh, I'm I'm from Toronto. I'm actually in cottage country right now. I'm on vacation. Cool. And Stephanie, it's so funny that you drew a snake because that was the first thought I had with my S. But then I ended up strangely drawing a belt. Oh. I don't even know if you can see it. I don't. I have no idea why I drew a belt. Oh, oh, right. interesting. It's, I'm I'm quite behind everybody in times or. Yeah, or I'm ahead of everybody in time, so it's really dark. I might be getting like sunset here. That's okay. Oh, if you get a, if you get a pretty sunset, you have to show us. <laughs> I will. Yeah, maybe you I have a. Your, I was gonna say maybe you drew a belt because you're a future fashion designer or something. <laughs> Not likely, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's because I'm like literally just in bathing suits and stuff right now, so I'm thinking about wearing pants. <laughs> oh, there you go. Fall weather coming soon. <laughs> Love it. How about Deb? Oh, yeah, great. Hi there, I'm from central Pennsylvania. Uh, so um, my, I did a D um, and I did a building. It's like a building with like birds flying away from it because I'm getting on a plane and flying to California and I live in Harrisburg, which is the capital of Pennsylvania. So I was like thinking about leaving town in a few days. <laughs> So what part of California are you flying to? San Diego. Oh, lovely. And then we're so driving up, I'm running a car, and then we're driving up to a Sacramento via some of the national parks. Oh, be out in nature. That'll be great. That's so nice. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll go. Um, hello, I'm Louise, and I'm based in San Francisco. So which is why I was wondering where you were, where you were coming, Deb. That's exciting. My parents are actually moving to Sacramento in a couple weeks, so I'll be there a lot more often. Um, but this is my drawing. It's a, so that was the L, and then they made it into a tree with some roots growing down and a little dog and a little sun. So, all right. Cool. Why don't we go in the same order, um, but we'll start with um, Stephanie and your, your play activity and what values you drew from that. Stephanie, you there? Sorry, my um my Bluetooth speakers decided to die on me. Oh. Um, so I'm switching over right to the wired one. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> okay. You want to go first with um, um your the way you like to play and then the the values for why you really loved it. Um. So my favorite thing to do was, I guess, like create scenarios with my dolls when I was younger. Like I had a dollhouse and Barbies. Um, I'm the oldest and I have two younger brothers. So I think like, you know, just like, I wasn't 
it was something I could do on my own and it just allowed me to be like very creative and imaginative. So I think that's mm -hmm. kind of what I got out of that. Um, and I just, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe like a little bit like in control of the story. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Did you, so you would have dolls and then you would um, like create little like scenes and skits for them. Is that what, what, what you would do? Yeah. It was like, oh. yeah, family, like creating family and friends and scenarios in like the different houses and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Did you play with yourself or did you play with others? Um, I think by myself, um, usually at home, but sometimes if I'm with like my girl cousin, like we'll play dolls together. Yeah. Um, but I think it was, more by myself because like my brothers would kind of do their own thing like yeah as well, so and why do you think um i'm gonna ask more probing questions because i've taken this workshop before i'm friends with jeff so oh, i'm nice. gonna probe a little bit more and i also do <laughs> work and play so i'm gonna be asking more but and feel free deb and charity to ask more questions um do you why do you think um you said it's about creativity why do you think you gravitated towards that creativity as opposed to other forms of creativity because there's so many ways of being creative Especially with yeah, kids. that's true. Why do you think that? Why do you think that in particular? Mm, probably because I wasn't really artistic, so it's probably not like that creative outlet. Outlet. Mm. Um, and I guess just like with like the imagination, like the possibilities are kind of endless, right? Like you can just create whatever scenario you want, and there's like I guess no one to. I know you're playing with it no one to tell you that it, you can't do it I guess mm. so you, you you somehow thought you weren't artistic in some way and that so you gravitated towards something where you didn't have to create something from scratch you were able to take the existing dolls or characters and able to build you needed something to kind of inspire you first yeah so nice. yeah cool. that kind of sounds like what I'm doing now like I can't like just create anything from scratch like <laughs> Mm -hmm. just building really off of what else is there so yeah that's, it is pretty interesting yeah cool anything else that comes to mind about about why you played that way or what other values you got from it um not right now i think you gave me like a bit to think about though like your with your questions <laughs> good <laughs> good it'll come in handy later you'll see <laughs> um Awesome. How about you, Sherry? Well, it's funny because I, I, it's funny because when I was younger, I actually played a lot of competitive sports. I played soccer and stuff like that, but that actually wasn't what I picked as my activity. It was one, it was one that I remembered, I think when I was like, it was probably around when I was six or seven and I used to get together with neighborhood kids and we'd be at somebody's house and it was kind of like Stephanie, it was pretend, but ours was actually made up from scratch. So like, the best way to think about it is an example. Like I, I sometimes called it like playing pirates or we'd be superheroes and like maybe we'd be in somebody's front walk. And if they had like a, a walkway that went down from the stairs, we'd be like, okay, that's the plank and all the grass on either side is the water. And so who's going to walk the plank? And we'd like, <laughs> somebody would like walk the plank. And then if you fell in the water, then somebody else would be like, there's alligators swim away. And it was all very pretend based. And that was actually, again, even though I spent a lot of time playing sports, that was the play thing I thought about. So mm. when we were picking kind of the principles, I was, I had sort of four that I pulled out and I was like, well, first of all, it was all imagination based. Like some days we'd be pirates. Sometimes we'd be like Raiders of the Lost Ark. And we'd be like, who's Indiana Jones? And sometimes we'd dress up and we'd do little parades down the street. But there was a lot of, it was all imagination. We created mm. some things. And then it was also all group play. So that's maybe where it was different from Stephanie. Ours was all, like mine was always with other kids in the neighborhood. I actually liked to kind of be together and we'd collaborate. And everybody would keep taking the story in different directions. Although I do wonder sometimes if maybe I was a bit bossy and I'd be like, no, 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 this is where it's, what's happening now. <laughs> <laughs> and there was always an element, then when I was thinking about it, I wrote down storytelling and creating because there was always an element of, there was always a story to it. It wasn't just an action. It was like story embedded in it. And then I think the one thing we loved about it is that, and this is probably the imagination part, but we weren't limited. There were no real world constraints. There were like nothing... Yeah nothing that was like conventional or rules applied it was all like anything could happen and so there was in the notion of pretend i think there was something about just it, it there were no rules it was just anything could happen mm. 
That's amazing. Well, it's funny because like we tend to equate play with things like the sports we did or things like that. But actually for a lot of us, that wasn't play because there was competition involved and there was a performance aspect involved that actually takes away the play aspect. And it's unfortunate that, you know, that, that takes away the play part of it because, you know, it's, it's not, right. it's not great. Yeah. Cause actually when I, I, I played soccer from a very young age and right from the beginning, it was, I loved it, but it was always quite competitive. It was like winning, like it wasn't just out playing in the streets for fun. It was like organized play win. So yeah. Mm, yeah. So creative, imaginative group, the playing with the group, no constraints, story. Love it. All right, Deb. So how long, I, I missed it. How long did he say? Um, there's four minutes left. Yeah. Yeah, so, four. I got two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I can sum it up by, I used to be a director of plays. In my basement, I would set up a stage. I would recruit my sister and my neighbor's children. I would direct them to a play that they would then do, perform, and our neighbor's parents would all come to be the audience and I would usher everybody in and then I would turn <laughs> the lights down and then it would be like a show but so all of this I got a little bit of structure in this I feel like because there was some kind of a structure to I had a methodology to it we didn't we didn't do it in the backyard just whimsically I like had some putting things together kind of a situation so I had structure and then storytelling and I've been a journalist for many years and a writer so I like stories and things like that um, community bringing people together is something that I really um, enjoy doing and I think that that shows like talking about bringing people together and creativity and expression like creative expression with acting and, and um, your interpretation of the character and how that changes and maybe the perception of the director and the actor have a dispute about whether or not they're portraying <laughs> the role accurately. <laughs> um, and then that's where leadership comes in and <laughs> direction and things like that. So those are the things I thought about. <laughs> oh my gosh. Awesome. <laughs> Sounds like you have a really good grasp of understanding of why you love that so much. That's so I do cute. now. I didn't think about that until this whole thing. Yeah, right. Like thinking back on your on and reflecting on yourself and your childhood, especially, it's it's enlightening. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It was hard for me to pick, but I'm. Um, for me, it was. I remember um, making up dances with friends or learning dances together, and like finding a group of us and like pretend choreographing dances that we would. Um, you know, do on our front lawn together. And um, there was always, and like for my high school talent show, my best friend and I literally rewatched um, a J Jennifer Lopez performance on the American Music Awards, like rewind back when there was VHSs, <laughs> rewound and watched it over and over and over to learn the choreography and then like try it out and perform it for a talent show. Neither of us, like I was not, like I, didn't, I hadn't taken any dance classes or anything. I just loved to dance and move. Um, and to collaborate and create with other people. There was, a, it was just so, to be able to create something with someone else and to collaborate on that was just always so exciting to me to be able to um, come up with something together and something that is um, creative and fun and high energy because I had a lot of energy as a kid. Um, yeah, so for me, it was really about the, how can I, create something with someone else? Um, how can I collaborate with them? How can it sort of culminate in something like a finished dance piece that we either perform on our front lawn or for a talent show or wherever, whoever would watch us, our parents? Um, yeah, how can we like accomplish something together? Because I think that I always, that was always more interesting to me than doing things on my own. Um, yeah, so, and then there was also an aspect of wanting to be seen. I know looking back now, it's like, I wanted to be, I wanted to be seen and I wanted, I wanted to, um, wanted that validation, I think from others around just like, um, feeling important, the right word. Feeling, feeling important. important. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I always looked up to, you know, performers for that reason. Like they are fully expressing themselves in front of others like unashamed, unabashedly. And that was really, really inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
Very cool. That was fun. That was fun. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and good. We just in the just right in time. time Twenty <laughs> seconds. Any last I words? Know. It was lovely to meet you both. Um, yeah. I, I've known Stephanie for a while because Stephanie's in the Fine Kong here community, so I, I've known her for oh, quite a while. Good. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll be coming back together too if it's if it's oh. structured the same way that um it was when i took it with him okay <laughs> cool so it'll be more so you guys came through the fine calm community yes oh, awesome. yep uh all right return hi everyone come Welcome on back again uh, we want to talk to all your lovely faces but for the sake of time and things you get to talk to each other instead of us. And so if it's noisy or in case maybe mute. Oh, we can mute everybody and then unmute. Okay, perfect. So hi everyone, did you all meet and did you all get to know each other? Give you a thumbs up if you did, if you were able to connect with each other. Um, so there are a few questions that, that come up. Um, what, when was the last time you actually thought about how you played as a kid? Into the chat. So throw in the chat if you thought about it in the last week, in the last month, in the last year, or maybe you're like, I have never thought about that. That was super weird. It's very strange. I don't get it. Um, so throw that in the chat. Um, and then also, is there anything that you learned about yourself by doing this? or relearned about yourself by just reminding yourself like, oh yeah, that's what I used to love to do as a kid. Oh, these are the reasons why I love to do this. So let us, let us know in the chat if there was reasons why. Like, why did I, did I have some epiphany that I didn't know before? I see a lot of people who, so there are some recent playful people and some people who have never thought about it and all of that's okay because we're learning and growing. Awesome. In the last year, I still like the solo activities because I'm still not a team member. Oh, I love this. This was more performance-based. Oh, from the play style values. I'm trying to find new ways of playing. I love it. I love it. Um, so, keep sharing. And then keep on sharing in there. And then the next question I have for you is like, about your values, um, thinking about those values for you, right? Lauren's are creativity, connection, and collaboration, right? For the play values that you came up, um, what have you done in the past week that has embodied those play values? Is there anything that you've done this week that taps into any of them? Maybe all of them, maybe one of them, but actually dives into them. And then if not, why not? Sometimes I know it's a blur right now, but try to think about the last week or so. Yes, Louise and I make TikToks together. So we brainstorm TikToks all day. Ooh, Barbara, you are lucky. You have a job that focuses on three. That's what I'm talking about. Playing D&D, &D, yes. Dungeons and Dragons all day. Love it. Dress up, fun things. It can be little or big. It's just any version of whatever those are. And then finally, um, I'm going to try something I haven't done much. I'm going to try... Um, this poll. So I'm going to launch this poll and feel free to, to, uh, it's just one question. What percentage of time in the last week did you spend living your values? Was it 10%? Was it a quarter of the time? Was it half the time? Oh, interesting. Ooh, ooh shifting. Shifting is happening. We, you know, some people may have to round up or down. That's okay. No judgment. Awesome. Okay. Here, let me let me see if I can share this with everyone so that everyone can check this out. Ta -da. Oh, so about about thirty two percent of you said ten percent, twenty nine said twenty five, and 
32 Ooh, some 75 percenters 75 percenters let's go so Very excited for you part of the reason why we're talking about this is because wherever you are on the scale there's no right or wrong answer here right but wherever you're on the scale how can you shift a little bit more right that's the part that we want to explore um and then the other part is we i want to slowly and, and briefly just dive into some of the science behind this, because a lot of times people say play is frivolous. It's like, I don't have time to play. But if you were to tie it into your work or tie it into anything that you've created that's amazing, or anything that you've ever had that has been your most memorable moment in your life, most of them are ones where you played. So another way of saying play is, is flow. So we're gonna dive into what the idea of flow is. And you probably know it already from when, if you are a runner, you have a runner's high, whenever you've gotten into the zone, it's this time in which you forget about time, where you forget about the past, the future, and you're really just fully present. And you forget, and then time just disappears. And you're just fully you. And we're like, how do you actually get into that, right? So let's just explore that just briefly. And then there's actual, nerdy science behind it. Um, all throughout positive psychology, they talk about flow. There is a guy, um, there's a doctor that just studies flow. His name is Dr. Mi Mihai Chiksay Mihai. Um, and one of his best quotes that I'm, I hear is, the best moments usually occur when a person's body or mind is stretched to its limits in a voluntary effort to accomplish something difficult and worthwhile. Optimal experience is thus something that we make happen. Um, so what that means is basically this chart here. And I'll just briefly go over what this looks like. So it's, it's his flow chart. He bases all of his theories around this chart. And if you were to think of the, a job that you had, when you first start any job, you aren't very good at this job. So because you aren't very good at this job, you don't have a lot of skills. Um, and then you have a lot of challenges because there's a lot being thrown at you. So you have a ton of anxiety all throughout the job. And you're like, oh, I don't know if I could ever, ever accomplish this. And you feel overwhelmed. And then hopefully at some point that calms down. On the flip side of this is boredom. Um, and that is where like, let's, let's explore Netflix binge watching. At first, it's so much fun. But after a while, there's not really any challenge to it. You know, there's, there's no, there's, you know, the skill level is like, so you start to get just kind of, kind of bored with it. But between anxiety and boredom, there is this river known as flow. And this is where all the answers are. If you're like wondering, like, I don't know what to do next. Oh, I'm having trouble figuring out, you know, I'm, I'm having trouble in all of this uncertainty. The answers are in the flow channel. And it's when you're, the difficulty of the challenge meets the skill level. It's something when you really enjoy it and you're fully present because it's really hard, but also you just enjoy the process so much. So when you're trying to figure out like, okay, how do I figure out the next amazing adventure? What is the next thing that I'm gonna do because of COVID, because I lost my job, because of all these things that might've happened? Um, what we first tell you to do is to enjoy the process, right? And it's just like, oh, well, oh, that's really easy. How do in the world do I enjoy the process? Well, you become present. Well, that's so easy. Well, how do I become so present, right? Well, you actually fall into flow. Well, of course, well, that's so easy. What does that even mean to fall into flow? And this is the key one right here is to fall into flow is to actually allow yourself to follow your curiosity. And what we mean by that is it's get really bored, get really quiet and actually listen to that quiet, strange voice. It's not gonna be loud. It's not gonna be like, you need to do this. It's gonna be like, this would be cool if we maybe did this. And then you follow it and you just see where it possibly takes you. And if you're like, well, I don't really understand how I can follow my curiosity. Part of the way in which you do that is you lean on the play values that we just spoke about. So in my case, um, I, um, I, well, I'll just go, how do I say this? My play style is one of 
experience, adventure, and connection. And my sister's on here, so she can, she can account for this, but I used to take all of my board games and I would line them up and I'd make this epic six hour long game. And then I would force my sisters to play it with me. And they hated it, but I loved it. Um, and what I loved about it was like, I was creating an experience, an adventure, and there was, a, and it was memories. It was memories that I could create with my sisters, right? Um, and because of that, what I realized was adventure, creativity, experience. How do I, how do I find those? So we're asking you to, to lean on those play values. But one thing about leaning on all of these play values and going through this is before we can actually figure out what we're going to do next, we really got to talk about what has already happened. So let's just think about for a moment, 2020. Um, so this is what many people might feel 2020 has been like, right? Just this you in December 2019, you had all these dreams about what you think was going to happen for you. You had, you know, you thought this was going to be the best year ever. Like how many of you write in the chat if you thought this was going to be the year? This was the year. The year I was going to, I was going to get married. This is the year that I was going to start a new job. This is the year that I'm going to address all of the things that I'm scared about because the, even the number 2020 is super cool, right? Um, in my case, and some people that are on here, they were former colleagues of mine, um, I had this vision of like, I had this really dope job. Um, I was speaking, we, had, we were about to go to Australia to speak, and then we were gonna speak at South by Southwest, and there was gonna be all these amazing opportunities for me to like take risks in a way that I never thought possible. And then March, I think March 15th, it was just like nothing, done, everything's canceled. I lose my job, all the speaking gigs disappear. You know, anything that I thought, any connections or any person that I wanted to see face to face, I now just couldn't see them. And that sucks, dude, that sucks for all of us. And a lot of us have not really addressed or mourned those experiences. So what we want you to do right now is we want you to take a piece of paper, maybe it's the opposite side, or no, it's not the, other. grab a brand new loose leaf piece of paper, not the one that you have your drawings on. And what we want you to do is we want you to write down those experiences that you feel you wanted to have in 2020 that you now currently are mourning. What are the things that you plan to do in 2020 that you currently have to mourn? And we'll give you time, we'll give you about two to three minutes to write that down and write as much as you can on here, all the ones. Go right ahead. Give you about 30 more seconds. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, everyone, give me a thumbs up if you've gotten ones down. And so just take a moment and just like look at the list. <sighs> now, the, the reason why we added this, we added this section was we, um, this play expert, Gwen Gordon, talks about how in order for you to play, you first have to soothe, you first have to calm yourself. Um, and a big part about being able to create the next thing is you have to let go of the results and the regrets of the past. So for us to really be able to create the next thing, we really have to let go of the thing we've been holding on to. And until we can do that, we really can't move on. So for a moment, just take that list that you have, hold it up. You don't have to show it to us, but just hold it up. And then what we want you to do is we want you to crumple it up. We want you to crumple it up. It doesn't mean you're destroying your dreams forever, but you're just crumpling up that you're letting go of this. And make it as tiny as possible because you must actually let this go for now. And when you're ready, this is totally up to you, but when you're ready, then I want you to toss it behind you because you're tossing it into the past so we can move on to the next stuff. All right? Whenever you're ready. Then take a deep breath. And if later on you find it on the floor and you're like, well, maybe I want to open it up and check it out, you can take it at that point and maybe burn it or do whatever other seance you need to do it to feel like you can move on. All right, we have done it. Let's take one more deep breath. Uh, sometimes you just All have right, to make noise. For the play part, we're ready for the new ideas. Now we're ready for the new ideas. All right, Lauren. So take now seat. that you've gotten rid of this extra heavy baggage stuff that you've been lugging around in 2020 and you're lighter and freer from that, we want to do our next activity, which is called the idea pinata. And what we're going to do is we're basically asking, we're going to get everyone ideas for how to get into your flow. Like Jeff was talking about the flow sort of chart if you will. Um, we had talked about it at one point, um, he and I were talking about how it's kind of like a river. There's like the boredom part is like the lazy river, the like overwhelmed, too much is happening is like the rip roaring rapids. There's a waterfall over there. You're stressed out. What we want is to help you all hopefully get perspective and find ways to get into flow, which is the like nice part where you're just like going down the river stream and you get to appreciate the view and hear the babbling brook sounds and enjoy it want to enjoy the ride in this river of life. So for the idea pinata, what is going to happen is you're going to use um, the possibly the scratch paper you had, either another paper or the back side of your drawing paper. And we are going to send you into breakouts shortly. You're going to share, all you're going to do is they will be likely new groups than what you had before. You are not talking about all you're going to share is your play values. So I'd be like, hey, I'm Lauren, and I liked um, creativity and problem solving and community. And what's going to happen is your job then is not to speak and then take your scratch paper and write down any ideas that others will give you idea candy to fill your idea pinata. And you're just going to write down everything. You want all the candy. That makes the best pinatas. You don't want to have an empty pinata. Just write down everything whether it makes sense or not just write down the words maybe it'll spark ideas later so the other people are going to come up with ideas for you that may include one of those things two three of those play values and you're just going to write it down you're going to go for about three ish minutes maybe or so at a time and then you're going to rotate we are also going to have um facilitators for this one um i'll remind you in a moment but the facilitators this time will be the shortest haired people so we mix it up. Um, but as an example, what we want to do to kind of help you get into this mindset is we're going to practice on Jeff. So I'm going to sort of facilitate with Jeff and I'm only one person and you all have more heads is better than one. So if you also have ideas for Jeff momentarily, you can type them into the chat and I'll try and check on those as well. So 
Jeff, idea pinata time. What was your, what were your play values? Okay, my play values are adventure, connection, and uh, memorable experiences. Creating memorable adventure, experiences. Adventure, connection, and memorable experiences. Okay, so right off the bat, we have story. Are you ready to write? Story, yeah, right. travel. Um, I first thought of like a scavenger, like making a scavenger hunt for people. Or um, there's also like geocaching is a thing. They have like a website. And you could go or you could create one. Um, someone said build a fort. We have, um, ooh, memorable adventure. Oh, ooh, um, ho host a like game show game night for your friends or as a job. I feel like that's like a growing industry right now. Um, we have hiking in there, uh, adventure, connection, memory, teaching, teaching people about stuff does that. Um, Ooh, someone said you could give a tour of a city, whether that's for real or pretend. I had a cousin who like made up facts about stuff. That feels memorable and weird. Um, it could be, we have, oh, cleaning up the park and making it a competition. Ooh, gamifying helpful things. Um, what else do we have? What other things could we have? We have, maybe you could leave May, when connection, like you can have people leave, leave people a joke or a riddle on your voicemail machine. Oh, I love that. Uh, someone suggested Airbnb virtual experiences. Ooh. That in super interesting. I never even thought about that. That's a good, I would have uh, Pub crawls, virtual or real. Um, and then there's some more things in the chat, but this was just an example. Jeff, sorry, I'm cutting you off because yeah, we got to yeah, move on to the next people. How about me? So that would be the facilitator's job, pay attention to the little time thing in the box. Um, but yes, so that's like the idea of what's gonna happen. So there will be one person who's, these are my play values, the other two or three of you are gonna be trying to come up with ideas and don't judge yourself, just say whatever comes to your mind because even if it means nothing to you, maybe it means something for them or it sparks something for the other person to say. It's just idea candy. Just Not everybody candy. likes everybody, all the candy, it's okay, it's just candy. And also what's really awesome is if you find yourself as you're just listening to curiosity and some crazy idea comes out and you share it with that person, that idea that you come up with might be the thing that actually sparks what they end up doing. It, and remember, it can, you know, you, you think about your life, all the dots connect on the way back and just knowing that some crazy idea that you had could impact someone else's life is the opportunity that you will now have in the next 20 minutes. So everyone's gonna get at least five minutes each to do this. And then if you finish early, go back to anyone else that needs more on the list. Look at my list is full, but get as many as possible. That is- Fill your pinatas. Um, so again, it's gonna be groups of three or four. Jeff is gonna send you to breakouts. Remember, facilitator first is the person with the shortest hair the lucky person who has the shortest hair to manage right now. And then you're going to say your name, your play values only, get some ideas, and then facilitator will help everybody rotate. Cool? Jeff, you ready? I am ready. We're okay. happening. We'll see you all in about 20-ish minutes. Hello again. Hi. Oh, Deb and I are we're in the same group before. Hi, everyone. Hello. All right. Who has the shortest hair? I think Deb will have the shortest hair. Yeah, I was going to say, unless you, you don't, yeah, I think everybody's got their hair pulled back, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I'll start with mine. Um, I had structure, community, um, creative expression, and leadership were the three to four that I had. Structure, what was the second one? Community or connection, like connecting community. Mm -hmm. Creating mm -hmm. creative ex expression, and then leadership. Mm -hmm. um, designing, um, uh, event product event planning or event production um let's see structure 
creating processes for a company. Um, leadership. Helping a company improve their leadership. <laughs> um, team building experiences. Organizing a car wash fundraiser Ooh. with water balloon fighting. <laughs> um, this is harder than I thought. No. Organizing a group trip when we can travel. <laughs> um, structure. Organizing. Organizing like a, like a, what is it? Like a, what is it? Like those, those days that it calls like wear your, wear your favorite hat day. Like organizing a play day. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, giving ideas on the, um, like a company's um, community events or their community, um, what are those called? <laughs> like the community events, <laughs> like the internal events within a company. You, you said structure, and what were the other ones? One yeah, time? structure, community, connection, creative expression, and leadership. I also had storytelling. Ooh. And your way of playing was doing the the plays when you were a kid. I know we weren't supposed to talk about that, but that helped. That helps me I, well, context. and all of these things I'm actually kind of doing. I don't know about the car wash thing or the, we are Is not group, breakers? I'm not group like, doing group travel, but we're doing a lot in the fine calm here community and I'm leading that. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yep. Community management. Yeah. yeah. Community management, community. Yeah. Programs. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like fundraisers. You'd probably be amazing at fundraisers. Um, I, I wish I could raise funds because <laughs> <laughs> bringing community together to raise funds. Yeah. Um, hosting a backyard movie night with <laughs> friends. And then <laughs> I just got a, um, a portable projector and screen. Oh, and I love that. we were, my boyfriend and I were trying to go do that, but we had Wi Fi issues. So we have to get an extender. <laughs> That's so fun. Like we just did that. Do, maybe like even if you were to bake something, or if there was like cupcakes with like emojis, like choose your emoji of your week, like and it like breakout room sessions, like be, <laughs> being creative with food. That's funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Helping people That's find their leadership style. Mm -hmm. um, I actually run a mastermind where I do that. <laughs> Cool. There you go. <laughs> I do a lot of these things. You guys are like mind melding, mind melding. <laughs> it's cool. There's a lot of cool stuff. I like this. This is different. I've not done something like this before. Um, yeah. So I like it. But well, how long do I get? I mean, you guys, you guys gave me a lot. We should like, you guys should go. Yeah. I think five minutes each, right? Yeah, I think we're yeah. right. Yeah, we're right yeah. about there. Mm -hmm. So Next shortest person's hair. I don't know. You guys have your hair up, so I don't know. Mine's the longest. <laughs> and that was that be me. <laughs> Go for it, Courtney. It's medium like. So uh, my play values are um, imagination. So um, make believe, escaping to a different world, um, imagination, dreaming, um, exploring. Ooh. Writing a book. Um, I'm seeing balloon rides in your future. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so funny because when we did the letter drawing, um, my drawing turned into a balloon. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. Mm -hmm. um, going to a costume party or creating some sort of themed party where everyone has to dress up mm. um, either for your own birthday party or a public event what were the words again oh yes do it again yeah say it 
Um, so dreamer, escaping to a different world, imagination, um, and exploring. Mm. Maybe like creating an event around the universes. <laughs> like the star galactic explorations. Oh, I like that. <laughs> or even, like, an exploration into the mystical forest. <laughs> mm. Do you like to explore? Whoops. Exploring different realms. Exploring the elemental realm and then the animal Maybe. kingdom. <laughs> I kind of got a picture of like taking people on one of those like um, Mexican ayahuasca retreats where you're like, oh. You're, you're in this like dream state, you're escaping the real world and exploring the adventures of the uh, ayahuasca dream. I don't know if that's a <laughs> thing that you would do, but I, I have friends that have lots of stories about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Just um, maybe dream and escape and explore. That kind of brought me <laughs> ayahuasca and Mexico. <laughs> yep. Love it. <laughs> mm. Design costumes. Um, just throwing things out. Um, I don't know why I just got a, an image of animals for some reason, but doing something with animals? I don't know why. <laughs> I am a photographer. And you're you're what? I'm a photographer and I photograph dogs. Oh, wow. Dogs in costume. I just. When oh my gosh! Costumes, and then someone said dogs that came to mind. <laughs> I oh my see goodness. a trip in your future where you take your dog on tour of the world as an adventure, <laughs> where you go into places like that are dark, and then you escape them. <laughs> <laughs> like the and then your dog room. emerges with the costume of like the, the oh. wherever you're at. Like if you're in the <laughs> desert or something, you're emerging with like this like hat on. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I'm seeing an image of do of dogs in also like mystical places, like mm -hmm. like with cool backgrounds and stuff. <laughs> um, and writing a book with those pictures, or creating a book with those pictures. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I love this. Um, they're great. Thank you. Yeah, we still have a minute though. Anything else? Uh, anything in the arts really um pictures of your dog for an art exhibit if that's not already a thing that you've done that's definitely an adventure in art exhibits mm -hmm. or probably any kind of exhibits or an adventure right now with covid you have a virtual oh, yeah. yeah yeah i've heard of virtual art showings yeah happening right now yeah uh, yeah Ooh, what else? Anything else? I just see like plants, like exploring the like the uh, the power of plants and like vegetations, like a new way of like showing up with nature. Exploring like how that can, I don't know, be an expression of play in like all of what you show, what you do. You're a photographer, right? And do you do anything else? No, just that. And when you said gardening I, or plants, I actually have a lot of plants. And this year I have a backyard garden. So oh. I escaped this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Creating well, a home things. farm. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> what was that? I said creating a gnome farm. No. <laughs> awesome. I love that we're actually hitting on things that you guys both have done so far. Right, that's crazy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what about you? Is it Louise? Louise, yeah. Um, so for me, my values were um, teamwork, um, performance or an entertainment aspect, like entertaining others or performing for others, um, and um, being what was the right term being being seen or being or being able to um create space that i that i can i can be seen i don't know how to explain that but anyway <laughs> that's the best way i can think of it impromptu dance 
gathering with friends in a park. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ooh, entertaining. That's so fun. Um, creating like personifications of a band and like having like <laughs> different parts of like different performances represent like your emotional play. Mm. Going on a journey with songs and performing them. Okay. A parade comes to mind. <laughs> You're in entertainment. That's so fun. Um, like costume play and using costume as like a form of your um, expression of anger in a good way. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Expressing anger through costume. <laughs> mm. Express emotions. I like that. Interpretive <laughs> dance. Interpretive dance around a fire. Mm. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, music, using drum, having a drum journey to like entertain mm. and shake your rump. <laughs> drum circle dancing. <laughs> yeah. I heard the entertainment the most, but can you say it one another time? Mm -hmm. uh, teamwork, um, entertaining, and then um, yeah, I think I, I just think I just like the attention <laughs> or being or having yeah an audience and some being be seen. Mm. Projection, like maybe having workshop of how to use your voice and how it lands and resonates with people. Mm -hmm. mm, being Ooh, what, what about one of those shows where you have like your, you have to do like some kind of crazy skill and it's like real life, but not and. Oh, what show? I don't know, like a show that. <laughs> like America's Got Talent? <laughs> what are those reality shows where like you're eating crazy things in the forest or something and oh. <laughs> you're doing like adventure challenges. So it's like, but you oh, have to work it. as a team to like survive. I was just thinking of like oh, teamwork, right. but like yeah. how you could like share that with the world and kind of like be a star in a way or something, <laughs> yeah. but you have to work with the team to be able to like be on the show. So right, have like, to have like some... the amazing race, one of those yeah. shows. Yeah. 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 Totally. Mystery <laughs> party. Oh. <laughs> um, my birthday next week, maybe I'll have to do that for my birthday. <laughs> Ooh, you can have a challenge for yourself where you show up and go live on your social platforms and express a character of yourself that day so funny you're being seen you're being seen girl yeah Let the world see you. i did do that for i have a podcast and i did do some live interviews um earlier this pandemic and went live on instagram and facebook so i would um, challenge you to go live with like as an entertainer and have like a persona for like the week <laughs> We did a mystery mystery cocktail night with friends. Um, got together and taught people how to make cocktails, or everybody brings a bunch of ingredients, and then you kind of make as mm. a team make something fun to drink that you end up drinking at the end. Oh, I do love cocktails. Awesome! Thanks, ladies. That's fun. Yeah, it was fun. Ooh. The Recess Life is your podcast? Oh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> how do you how would you find it? I'm just Google your name and podcast. Oh. And <laughs> no, how fun. We need to keep in touch. I took a screenshot so I have your name. Oh, I followed awesome. I Courtney, I followed you on Instagram. I'm a photographer too. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, Thank you. Got a creative bunch here. All right. Okay. Let's okay. pronounce your name just so we make sure we we get her. It's Mara Liz, like whoop, there it is. Got it. Nice, it's I Mara love that. Beautiful. <laughs> um, for me, play values throughout the exercise were imagination, storytelling, and um, impact, making impact. impact. Ooh. Being a speaker mm -hmm. at an event somewhere, and sharing your story. Um, Writing a book also, fiction or nonfiction. Um, yeah, using your story to inspire a fiction book. Mm. 
like creating another character with like a slightly different name and then writing it in sort of a myth mythical, writing the story in a mythical way. Mm. What about improvisational storytelling? Mm. Ooh, I love that. Improv is so fun. Mm -hmm. um, that story. Impact story and imagination. Um, creating a documentary film Ooh. around um, that has some sort of impact, that has to highlight some sort of impact issue area that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, Do you have a blog at all? Oh. Um, I have a website that just got launched. It's interesting that storytelling, um, my background is in PR. I do teach mindfulness awakening yoga and I lead clients and retreats and elevating consciousness. So that's always been a, that's a part of me, but yeah, the real, the core before that is I'm in, an entertainer. So like I'm a dancer, I like write, I PR. So like a part of that, like a playful child still wants to, be in expression, you know? Mm hmm Take dance classes again if you stopped. Yeah, I totally did. So that's a big one. <laughs> yeah, get back in there. There's some, what kind of dance? I did hip hop, but I, I have like jazz and modern background. Amazing. I, I also do hip hop. So I love it. Hey. Um, what if you took a dance class you, of a type of dance you've never done before? That is a good one. Mm -hmm. um, that would be yep. great. Yep, absolutely. Um, Stumped. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's so many directions it could go. It's almost like hard to pinpoint. <laughs> like, yeah. An exact idea. Um, do like a, put on a talent show um, where all your friends come together and they showcase their talents and they share um, the story a behind it. Virtual talent show that you Ooh. host and Have you, you share their stories through interpretive dance. <laughs> <laughs> while sharing their impactful story of their life. Oh my God, yes. A there you go. A virtual <laughs> performance. Absolutely. <laughs> Putting it all in a blender and mixing it up. <laughs> yep. That's good. <laughs> I feel like you have something in your personal story that you need to share more. That's my hunch. My intuition around that. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Be more oh, like, yeah. Right, more. I think content writing because I um I do that and I do share like one on ones and it always feels like the feedback I receive is like you need to be sharing this more. Mm. And I haven't been like sharing it. So yeah, it's a call. Yep. Yeah, and whatever medium feels good to you. So many stories. Um Mm -mm. I'm going to put an interpretive dance of my story for all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come watch. <laughs> you're, in, you're inviting. Thanks to hey. Jen. Show up with an interpretive dance of how you feel in a virtual talent show. How that was. What was that like? Did you get a lot of ideas? Hopefully you've got some full pinatas. And then to make sure of it, let's see the list. Lift up your list. Got some things in there. We'll get a little, I'll get a little screenshot of this. Are we, all, are we all back? Can we tell if we're all back? I think we're back. Austin has strange pinata. Love it. All right. Okay. All right, so everyone, um, all right, the moment of truth. We are breaking this pinata open. You have all these ideas and it's time to break it open. And I'm gonna ask you something very difficult to do, but I'm gonna ask you to circle 
your top three favorite ideas that get you excited that you can do right now, that you can apply right now. So both must excite you and it's doable right now. Top favorites. And then if you think you have them, are we going with a thumbs up for a... And then give us a thumbs up if you think you got there. it. We'll wait till every, as we got so a, we can a majority. Click through, click through everybody. Thumbs, we've got most, many thumbs up, a few, maybe another moment, few moments. Choose your top favorites, favorite candy. All right, I think we got a critical mass. Okay, all right. So then out of those top choices, we want you to pick one. So choose one. The one. The one. It's not the one forever, but it's the one right now. The one that most excites you. And if it's like, well, it's two, if you can combine them, sweet, but pick, pick one. And thumbs up, you got it? And then once you've decided which one that is, I want you to write down like one step in how you're going to do this. Like what is one initial step you can actually do to start exploring this type of play that connects with your play values? What is that? What is one small step? Meryl's is feeling it. I love this music. <laughs> I'm feeling it. <laughs> and then give us a thumbs up when you have that one step. Keep it up for your step once you and have it. And then this part is really important. So you've spent almost an hour and a half with us. We went through this whole process. You identified your play value, identified something really cool that you want to do, but it it, this workshop does not matter if we actually don't do it, you know? And this is the reason why we created this, is so that we could inspire people to actually start finding their play more. So in order to help you and support you in doing this, we want you to think of one person that can help either make this a reality or can be your play buddy, almost like your play accountability buddy and write who that person is down right next to the idea. And then the second part of this, and this is the bigger part, and this is what makes it real, is we want you to either text that person right now or start an email to that person letting them know that you need help with this. And you don't have to explain everything. You can just be like, I'm at this weird workshop and they told me that I, you know, I want to do this play thing. I, I, at some point, I need to talk to you about this play thing. Just remind me. It could be as simple as that, but we want you to either text that person, or if you can't text the person, start writing that email to that person right now so that it's ready to go. So after you get off this, you are able to just hit send. And it doesn't have to be a long message. Be very general, be super specific if you have your plan, but we want it to be real.
and then give us a thumbs up if you were able to do that. And thanks, Whitney, for the music. Oh, so awesome. Love it. Love it. Um, and so before we wrap up, um, just one last thing I want to say about this is, so the other process of like, if you think of that flow chart we had earlier, the, if you're willing to do this play thing that you fully just committed to, right? The whole idea of doing it is not even so much, again, where we're focused on the result of what may happen. It's more the idea that you're practicing diving into your actual play values and really like following your curiosity. And this might lead to something else, which might lead to something else, which might lead to the thing. But what we really are trying to emphasize is that the more you're willing to be vulnerable and allow yourself to fully play out, full out play and really take this risk. If this like idea, for example, makes you really nervous, because when you do that, something magical will happen. And some memory, you know, from the past is going to connect to some amazing thing that you're going to create in the future. So Lauren, this, this idea is the current idea. It doesn't be the idea. It's not a big idea. It could be, it could be a small idea. It's just an idea to get you in that level of the river. And just like, like we're in a weird moment right now. Let's all like, we're, we're, let's be honest. Like the world's kind of a weird time and things are changing and we're in a shift that just being open to the possibilities and following that curiosity, like, a decade or a couple decades ago, like Google didn't exist. Esports wasn't real. Those people followed their curiosity, did the things they liked, had a good time and got good at a thing. And you can also be good at a thing. So that's what we're hoping you all got some good idea pinata candies and get to eat some of that candy and make some, like get started on the pathway to making some of this um, happen and found play buddies. So in Conclusion, um, kind of like the draw, like very basically kind of like the drawing at the beginning, you're following instructions, you didn't know where it was going, but we went with the process, you ended up with a fun picture, and now you have an idea pinata full of candy, and here we are. So follow your curiosity, be bold, it's not failure, it's just learning new ways or new things that you like to do or don't like to do, and it's learning, so your future is where your fun is, and don't forget to go play. Thanks for joining us. Thanks everyone. We will send out an email afterwards with all these amazing things um, and as well as information on the, the Find Come Here community um, as well as we want to follow you on your journey. So there will be a link for this group so you can constantly share the play things that are happening. And please email us if you do something. We want to be excited with you. Share it with us, us because we'll inspire you. others. Thank you again, and uh, have a good we'll evening. Talk to you later. See yeah, everybody. Oh, I'm gonna take a photo of that. It's so lovely. Thank oh, you. Oh, Thank you. you. You're yeah. welcome. Thanks, Thanks so much. You. Thank you so Please. much, you guys. You. So generous. Oh, Bye. Yeah, this is wonderful. Yay. Yay. Bye. Yay. We need music to play us out. Should I oh, there, we, oh, yeah, we got some music yeah. to play us out. I love that. That's a great <laughs> idea. That's great. I love that, Jeff. Great workshop. Oh, thank you. It's amazing sauce. So, so yeah, much, each and every so much we do it. cohesiveness, so much cohesiveness, right? With like people like mind melding with me. It's like nuts. Really? That's what we want. That's my, what we my want. My activity is outdoor movie, and I already got a projector for an outdoor movie, and they said outdoor projector. Wow. I'm like, what? And Jeff, it was so cool to meet your sister. I was in a group with her. I know. I know you met my sister. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> you need to give her ideas for having her kids play in, in classes. Oh my goodness, I do need to. I didn't even You need think to help about her that. with that. She said She's a phenomenal she, teacher already, so it's like Well, she said she was having a hard time thinking of things to do in 45 minutes to let her kids have fun. So I told her, "You have a brother, you can certainly ask." That is a good <laughs> point. Thank you, Kathy. God, I didn't even think about that. Oh, man. This was great fun. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks so much for coming.
Bye. Bye. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Thanks, Charlene. Thanks, Charlene. And it was we wonderful. Take care. Just what I needed. <laughs> Whitney, that music. That I music. So that like music, <laughs> Whitney. Top notch. It's top notch. I was like, well, this feels exactly. like an off the wall choice, but I think it's good. <laughs> I listened to others and was like, nope, I've tried to branch out. That, that was my top choice. <laughs> The music added a new component we've hadn't had before. So um, there were some emotions that were silence and my cat meowing. <laughs> I just saw Frank's tail. Do you see Frank there at the end? He was just like, my tail's going. <laughs> but working from home. Um, but yes, thank you all for joining. I was like, who we got? I was like, is it Le Leah? Leah. Stephanie. Leah. Hey, everybody. Yeah. If you want to see, Stephanie is speaking to this really. <laughs> huge nomadic travel group in about two or three weeks three in weeks, September. So we are gonna be doing a practice run of her talk. So if you'd like to join it, Leo was part of it last time, but Whitney, if you, you know, if you, you know, Deb, we need new people to give her feedback. So Whitney <laughs> open. <laughs> when are you doing it? Your second run through? I think next Friday, the 21st. Cool. Sounds if great. I have Wi-Fi signal wherever I'm at, I will be there. Wait. Perfect. We'll send out the invite to people. Well, send me send me the invite. I'll be there. We'll All right. Hey. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Nice. Yeah.